will come up for you on your screen. Axis Bank is at the high point of the day. Along with that, we have uh, ICICI Bank not doing too bad as well. ICICI Bank supporting the cause of the Nifty Bank as we speak. Along with that, we have State Bank of India too moving higher. Not just that, we also have India Bulls Housing Finance has had a wobbly, wobbly all of last week and currently sitting at the high point of the day from the financial space. But let's move on to a CNBC TV18 exclusive now, as you can see flashing on your screen. Sources tell us that the MCA will be conducting fresh, detailed scrutiny of about 3 lakh companies. Tim C. Jaipuria joins us with more details now. Tim C. Well, as you rightly mentioned, uh, what we understand from sources is the fact that the government is now going to conduct a fresh round of detailed scrutiny of over 3 lakh companies. Government has identified these 3 lakh companies on the basis of the mandatory KYC norms, uh, which these companies did not comply to. Uh, remember, government had come up with these norms, uh, which had a deadline of June 15. And post-June 15, close to about 7 lakh companies have already complied to these norms. And the remaining the, uh, one of what government feels that another 1.5 lakh companies are expected to join in the system by complying to these norms in a month's time. And the remaining 3 lakh companies are those where the intention of these companies is not correct, where they feel that these could be dormant and shell companies who are uh, dealing with a lot of unidentified and unaccounted money. And thus, a detailed scrutiny is warranted against such three lakh companies. The entire exercise will be based on the red flag indicators that government has set uh, to identify these companies. And government is very clear that in a month's time from now, they will start this detailed scrutiny based on these indicators through the system, and they would like to weed out these companies as soon as possible. Tim C, thanks a lot for that. Definitely the street will keep an eye out on how that pans out, and they would like to weed out all these companies as uh, quickly as possible. Meanwhile, the market's trying to gain as quickly as possible as we speak as well. Very close to that 11,800 mark for the Nifty. Hindalco is the one which is moving higher as well. We've spoken about some of the banks, but ITC has also aided its cause or lending, lending its shoulder to the Nifty. Along with that, we have Gale, which has moved higher. Kotak Mahindra Bank not doing too bad as well. And uh, UPL has recovered from the lows. The small cap index, in fact, as we speak, has also moved to the high point of the day. The mid cap index, while it is underperforming with a gain of just about 100 points as against uh, the other indices, which are three quarters of a percent in the green. We have the mid cap index, which is underperforming with a gain of almost half a percent. Uh, the European markets, they should come up for you right now as well, because all through the day, we have been outperforming the Asian as well as the European markets. So let's see if there has been any spike in the European markets uh, well no none such in fact most of those indices are in the red still hovering closer to the lower end of today's trading range so this outperform performance is purely domestic we'll keep an eye out on how the last hour of trade pans out that will be fairly interesting so we wrap up on the show now but uh, you do remember to re email us all your queries we'll address them with our experts stay tuned closing bell comes up next The Nikkei, that was under some pressure. That, in fact, it's uh, trading with a wee bit of a cut. The FCC has dropped now from 44% to about 37 today. So we're still defending 11,650 on closing basis. There's still budget around the corner now. Mm. The note from City this morning, they've taken a sharp target price cut on Imami from 430 plus to around uh, uh, 340 odd. Nifty is opening 20 points lower, 22 points now. Uh, 11,670 is what we have. The risk reward for equities at this point in time might not look uh, very good uh, from a near term perspective, but I think the longer term outlook for equities still remains fairly good. Don't think it's a matter of concern for most of the housing finance players. 11,696 is where we're at. This could add around 200 crores to the company's bottom line, and that could be a substantial number of around 20%. First high level engagement between India and uh, the United States. Mike Pompeo will be here tonight. The market is sitting at the high point of the day and a couple of heavyweights are moving higher and that is what is really helping the cause. <clears throat> okay, so strong day for the market. What a powerful short covering bounce we are seeing. And once again, just respecting the boundaries is working. This morning, 11,650 was respected. And from that point, it's a one-way rally that we have seen. Crucial last hour coming up, we have seen what the market has done in last hour for the last couple of days. Could today be different? We'll find out. Uh, 
But for now, a very strong pullback is what we're seeing right now. This is closing bell. I'm Anuj. And with me is Surbhi. Hi, Surbhi. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Anuj. I'm just flabbergasted. I'm like, where is this coming from? Because, um, you know, it's not really expiry day that yeah. typically you'd think on, on Thursday this kind of a trade plays out. We don't have any great global cues, no fresh new trigger or development in this market. So, I mean, how do you look at whatever the screen's done today? Again, a reminder that if mm -hmm. you respect the risk reward that this market has offered you, mm -hmm. you will make a lot of money in this market. Mm. You could, you know, it does not matter where it you know has come from <laughs> as long as you know that texture was intact which is that mm. you again had a bounce from 11650 in the morning that level was respected once again and if as a proper risk reward trader you would have just put a stop loss at that mark and taken a long trade the market has rewarded you yeah. and you know again if you go towards 11850 perhaps the reverse trade will once again work mm. and we will not know the trigger but essentially, this is still a range bound market which has a well defined boundary 11,650 to 11,850. You went to 11,850, didn't break it, came down to 11,650, again didn't break it, and now you are once again back in the middle of that range. Uh, the bank nifty is seeing powerful short covering. Uh, last hour could be crucial because this is expiry week. Uh, is there going to be more short covering? We'll find out. But. Uh, it's not one of those roaring bull markets, Survey, where you get, mm. you know, trending days like, you know, a 500, 600-point nifty day or a 150, 160-point, nif you know, uh, nifty day or bank nifty day, the, the, the like, likes of which we used to see mm. some time back. The only example I have of recent memory is the last Thursday when yeah. you had that expiry. That was the expiry. That weekly expiry, mm. that move. Uh, but uh, I don't know. Uh, this... The problem with this market is that the rallies are vulnerable to be sold into. Mm. Uh, so for last hour, that risk is always going to be there. But for whatever it's worth, today has been a powerful shot coming. Absolutely. And as of now, the sellers absolutely have had no headway in this market because uh, the market's just moved one way and that's up. We don't have the kind of volatility that we were dealing with yesterday. So is this how it's going to play out till 3.30? We will find out. Let's get started. You're watching Closing Bell. And here's what's lined up. It is green across the screen with the market at the day's high, driven higher by heavyweights like RIL and the HDFC Twins, even ICICI Bank for that matter. Lots of heavyweights on the upside today. Uh, we will be discussing a lot of the trends and also the mid-cap moves with today's uh, experts. We have Mr. S.P. Tulsian of sptulsian.com, market expert Amrish Baliga and Sudhi Bandhapadhyay of Indie Trade Capital joining in. Now with the market trying to bounce back from recent lows, what are the next steps and the next triggers ahead? And from a portfolio standpoint, how does uh, the next, uh, uh, next couple of months look like? Shailesh Rajbhan, Deputy CIO, Equity at Reliance Mutual Fund with us on the show today. Now, of course, uh, global headwinds and a lot of the geopolitical tensions are still keeping a lid on global markets. Where does that place India from a medium-term context? Sushil Keria reading the medium-term technicals for us uh, a little closer to 3 o'clock. And of course, as always, lots of trading ideas coming your way with the technical experts Ashwini Gujral and Mitesh Thakkar. Okay, how should you position yourself in this last hour of trade? We have Ashwini Gujral and Mitesh Thakkar now joining us with closing strategies. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, uh, Ashwini, powerful short covering bounce. Uh, uh, what's the thought process now on the index and what would be your stock calls? See, it is powerful but not as powerful as Thursday was. So basically, my sense is that uh, still in this 11,650, 11,850 range and uh, we had middle of the day said that we'll probably close uh, towards the highs of the day but uh, it's a rally which is not too strong and upswing is a much better word and uh, chances are last hour, uh, last one hour you should see a bit more short covering however uh, if you have uh, long positions and you are making 200 on bank nifty and 50 70 on nifty this could be a good time to take profits as well so that way uh, I would think the 90% of today's rally is probably done. Individual stocks, uh, BPCL is a buy with a stop of 374, target of 390. RIL is a buy with a stop of uh, 1275, target of 1330. 
and uh, overall uh, you will go for buy on dips from tomorrow so that way uh, you know uh, that may have changed but again if you get a gap up and uh, the market collapses on you uh, that could still be a risk okay um all right uh, uh, mitesh let's get your thoughts on today's day as well uh, on the index would you still play for a long in the last one hour and what about stock calls See, to be very honest, I think, you know, uh, when it was testing 11, 656, 70, I was wondering whether I'll go short if it falls another 10 points, just kind of bounce back from there. But yes, we have taken minor longs once it crossed uh, 11, 7, 10 and uh, hoping that it will head towards 11, 850, which is the upper end of the range. Having said that, uh, the two stock calls which I have are uh, both on long side. CESC is a buy. It's moved up slightly, but around 780 buy with a stop at 768 for targets of 805 and SEAT is a buy with a stop at 922 for targets of 974. Okay, fair enough. Uh, uh, let's invite our fundamental experts then, S.P. Tulsan of SPTulsan.com and Amrish Paliga with us. Uh, 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 Mr. Tulsan, good afternoon. Uh, thoughts first on Torrent Power, that stock up 11% right now. There was of course some news on that, but uh, do you track it and what's, what's your view on the stock? Senuj, in fact, we have been giving buy call on these two power stocks. In fact, when I was asked that which are the two companies, I have said that CAC and Torrent Power can be looked into. And yes, you are right. In fact, the charges have been increased or allowed the company to charge the extra, I think, one rupee per unit. And that is seen extremely positive. In fact, if you see the company, probably very good play, you know, on the on, uh, integrated play on the power space, generation, distribution, transmission. Having the areas covered as Gandhi Dham, Surat, Agra, Bhivandi, and in fact they have a requisite generation capacity also. With the balance sheet seem to be very much in place. In fact, torrent power is the is the effect of the merged. You know, four five years back when Surat Electricity and Ahmedabad Electricity also got merged. And in fact, yes, we have been keeping positive bias on the on the stock. But I think after eleven uh, having been given buy call for last couple of months on the utility space. I think this is a time that one can book profits for the for, for the for the short term and again look to buy at the lower level. But yes, the things are seem to be the effect of the increase given to the company by the regulator in the in the in the distribution space. Okay, Torrent Power definitely hitting the highs today, 11% up on that stock. In fact, the mid-cap market has so, shown some signs of life. For instance, look at something like a Canfin Homes, which is right now at the day's high, 3% up on that stock. Uh, you have momentum on something like Adani Enterprises. Uh, some of the banks like Allahabad and Syndicate, they have found uh, buyers today. So at least there's some life in the mid-cap market. We also have Amrish Baliga with us in the conversation this afternoon. Amrish, uh, thanks for joining in. Yeah, good afternoon. Um, so let me actually ask you about some of the mid-cap financials that at one right. point used to be the, you know, the toast of the market. Uh, how do you look at some of the NBFC names like Canfin? Canfin is also deal-oriented because, right. you know, we don't know what happens to the Canara Bank stake. Yeah. But uh, some of these stocks? Uh, see, I mean, the way to look at some of these stocks is uh, whether they are survivors or whether they are the victims. And uh, clearly, we have seen most of the vict victims actually going under. Uh, DHFL clearly is one major case. Uh, but then uh, going ahead, uh, I mean, the survivors finally will surely get a better valuation than what possibly they've been getting in the last uh, six months to 12 months. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, uh, I mean, uh, even uh, the business for them would be better because there would be a consolidation in the space. So I think uh, we could see uh, issues possibly over the next two to three quarters. And, and, and I think by, uh, by that time, we will see most of the issues getting uh, cleaned up. And I think that is the time to possibly look at uh, these stocks uh, to pick up. But again, I mean, here I would surely stick to the better names. Uh, I mean, stocks like uh, uh, LIC Housing. Uh, I mean, if, if, if you're talking if you're talking of housing, then clearly it's LIC Housing, HDFC. I think these are the two stocks to be looked at. Okay. Uh, well, uh, some of these stocks, of course, have done well. Uh, today's uh, uh, other big move is happening in cement, especially India Cement. 
up eight and a half percent. Amrish, good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon. Thoughts on cement, or I mean, in particular, say India cement. Ah, uh, see, uh, cement. I have been bullish for a while, and it's actually played off decently well. And uh, clearly, I mean, the focus is there on infrastructure. And uh, again, uh, I mean, if you look at the sort of infrastructure rollout which can happen over the next four or five years, especially uh, to actually pump up the economy. And uh, now, since uh, there is again a talk of uh, funds being released by RBI uh, from the Capital Reserve. Again, most of that will finally go into uh, infrastructure and uh, uh, I mean uh, government focus areas because that's the only thing which can actually perk up the economy. And if infrastructure actually takes off, then you, we are talking of cement, and uh, because of which I've been in fact su suggesting Ultra Tech for a while. Uh, I mean that's done decently well. My other pick was Ambuja, which has been uh, more of a, more of a laggard, but I think even at these levels it makes a lot of sense. And uh, JK Lakshmi is the third one which I've uh, been advising. Okay, so those are a couple of cement picks that uh, Amrish has in mind. Uh, let's pull up tyre stocks. Again, it's sort of a news-driven move that we've got on them. So you were seeing MRF, uh, SIAD, JK Tyre. All of these names are up and about between 2% and 4%. Uh, that's been the move. But Mr. Tulsi, I mean, countervailing duty might come. That's okay. Some protection against China. But these stocks have really destroyed a lot of wealth this year. Uh, and maybe even with the auto sector itself in slowdown mode, is there any sense in looking at them uh, from a portfolio point of view? See, Surabhi, you get to make money when the, the when the stocks gets uh, beating and you know correct to a or, or maybe the because of the extra pessimism seen we having built in. The case in point could be Imami. Yesterday afternoon in the show, I've said that this looks a very good buy at 270, and today see the share price having moved to 290. Coming specifically on tire industries, yes, the CBD will definitely be playing a positive. And mind it that once the cycle in the OEM sales starts picking up, then all tire stocks will, 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 will start moving up. And the advantage with the tire is that they have the replacement market also. And if you see the destruction having taken place in the valuation, whether you talk of CR, MRF or Apollo tires or JK tire for that matter, in fact, all of them seem to be disproportionate to the to the fall in the in the financials of the company. And yes, the crude having uh, softened to $65, I'm not taking a day-to-day -day volatility which used to rule at about $75 is seen quite positive for the for the for the tire makers also so if you have this CBD even on the 16 inches above on, on the radial tire of the wheel rim even that is seen quite positive that yes the things that the government is very much concerned for protecting these industries which is very much required and once the as I said that once the auto vehicle sales starts picking up which is expected maybe from second week probably June should form as the bob as the bottom or maybe the worst of the of the sales you know which will be seen behind will definitely be seen positive so yes the time is right when the things are seen you know at its low the, the, the similar pattern you know we in fact initiated buy call in the month of february on cement sector when they were lying low on the expectation that yes q4 and q1 will really be seem to be quite good and uh, see, see the effect is post february the cement stocks have risen by about maybe 25 percent across the board so yes, the tire stocks can be looked into, but maybe with a longer time horizon of maybe four to six months or so. Okay, all right, about uh, 240 as of now. And I know it's just getting stronger and stronger, right? We've got a full 90 point up move on the index, almost 300 points on mm -hmm. the Sensex. So that's a 90, perfect 90 on the Nifty. So as of now, it's up, up and away. Yeah, as of now it is and uh, things looking good. Uh, also, you know, what's interesting is that uh, the mid caps have started to recover as well today. You know the advanced decline has looked quite okay, and you know there's a set of stocks which are in a bull market of their own, like Manapuram. Mm. And that's doing well. Uh, uh, again, you know it's uh, the respecting the boundaries. Uh, that's all. I, you know till the Nifty breaks 11,850 or 11,650, we'll keep talking about you know uh, you know on these days we'll keep mm. talking about the market surging. On days like yesterday, we'll keep talking about the pessimism in the market. But ultimately, it's a bank. Ultimately, it's a, it's a bank. Band. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's take a break on that note. We will come back and keep uh, our chat going. Also joining us on the show, the alpha manager of the day is Shailesh Rajbhan of Reliance Mutual Funds. He manages several of the Reliance funds, including the the multi cap. That conversation coming up in just the next couple of minutes.